Okay, good Wednesday physical practice. Um, guys came out here with mental intensity and focused. Um, went to, like we always do, we do a significant amount of good on good. On Wednesday, there's a lot of overlap within our schemes. And at the same time, you know, we broke off and worked against the developmental squads, the scout squads, and um, a lot of focus on the red area today. Uh, they're a really good red area offense and defense. Uh, short yardage goal line situation, a lot of specialty stuff, and uh, certainly cranked out a, a good amount of work on special teams. Adam Stack uh, has kicked and looks like he's always looked, looking really, really good on uh, on field goals, and we extended him too. You know, we, we had him kick uh, from you know 40 yards and out, and uh, he did a really, really good job. So um, all systems go there, and um, open questions. How do you balance the good on good with, with getting what you need out of it without getting hurt and tiring the guys out? No doubt. On Wednesday, the first thing you do is when we do our own indie run periods, we'll go half line run. So we'll do four plays uh, with the ones on the right side, four plays with the ones on the left side. We use a backside guard. That way we could run our gap schemes and prevent any roll-ups on the backside tackle. That's usually the injury that comes with the gap schemes. Then after we do our scout stuff for about 18 to 22 plays, we'll come back together and do four ones-on-ones, four uh, twos-on-twos, and then maybe get an extra couple reps at the end. And then today at the end of practice, it was more you know the perimeter stuff. We ran two-minute drill against each other, ones-on-ones, twos-on-twos. That's what all the hoopla and hollering was about out there. But, uh, Who won? Well, you know what? The defense came up big today in two-minute drill. Did a heck of a job. Did a heck of a job. But it was really competitive, and that's what you want out of the drill. You want to work speed on speed, um, and you want to make sure that we never lose sight of just competing in the whole iron sharpens iron mentality. I know, I know this is something that you touched on a little bit on Monday, but is this kind of sort of the matchup that Jordan Scott's built for, kind of that, that heavy? I think the way we run our defense, he's built for, for all the matchups that require you know taking care of the A-gaps. He's certainly a, a big, explosive, imposing guy. He's done a, a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job in the run game. I think he's undervalued in the passing game sometimes. You don't hear his name much, but he gets so much push in the pocket that it prevents the quarterback from stepping up and allows the edge rushers to get there. So um, we all know how valuable he is, and I think he's been training. He's been working hard for you know, not only what he's been doing, but also for you know, conference games. So he's, um, he's ready, he's prepared, and excited to watch him play. Speaking of Jordan, finish this sentence. Jordan Scott, most likely to... That? President of the United States of America. Wow, why is that? And he's just, he's got that personality. He's extremely smart. You know, he came out here, you know, he committed to Oregon without ever being out here. You know, so he's a guy that he, he works on faith and on his gut and his feeling. And he immediately, you know, he was 365, 370 pounds. I think a lot of people doubted him. And all he did was go to work and shed the weight and become a freshman All-American and do exceptionally well in school as well. So he's a get it done guy and um, his personality is one that he he people gravitate to him because he does the right thing so um i said president huh vote? well does he get my vote oh yeah oh, without a doubt <laughs> without a doubt i think he does uh, i don't think anyone that knows him wouldn't because he stands for the right things J jordan is made of the right stuff his upbringing is uh, you know is a, the way he is is a testament i should say to his upbringing and um, you, you just don't ever see him flinching from doing the right things. How do you feel about the other guys on the interior of the, that defensive line? On our defensive yeah. line? Yeah. Oh, you know, Austin has had a really good, uh, you know, minus the penalty. He, and he knows, he knows he can't do that. But he's really played just really good football for us. And, you know, Jalen's so versatile. Jalen's played inside. He's played outside as an outside linebacker. He's played a four down defensive end as well. Um, he's more than just an edge rush guy. I think people mistake him for, well, you know, he just kind of comes off the edge and, and he's able to beat people with speed. Jalen has great, great power, and he uses his hands extremely well. So you'll see him get underneath tackles, see him get underneath guards. He'll play the two eyes sometimes, get in there in the A-gap and play and kind of hold up there as well. So uh, he's done really well. You know, Gary has done um, a really good job. Gary is, is learning how to get his feet in the ground and coming out of his hips and playing with power. He made a couple really big plays last week, controlled the line of scrimmage, controlled the offensive lineman. So I think just a combination of all those guys. Popo's played a little bit. He's coming around. Popo's coming around. Uh, Carlberg, Drayton, has another guy that, you know, in camp it showed at the end. Him and Gary were both coming on. And I think in these first three games, you've seen some pretty good productivity from them. So we expect those guys to factor in on Saturday. Last year in goal line situations at Stanford, they really took advantage of their height outside running those like goal line fades. Is that something that you guys were working on when you're talking about the red zone stuff? Oh, absolutely. You know, they, they do it very well, right? They got us last year a couple of times. They just kind of lined up and pitched the ball out there. They did it um, last week as well. You know, it's what they do. So you have to be aware of it and you have to be able to stop it.
What did Diamador and Thomas Graham have to be able to do to stop that type of play? Be physical. I mean, when you, whenever you play against Stanford, you have to be physical. You have to be focused because it's not just about playing hard. It's it's not. It's not. I think people confuse that all the time. It's, oh, we're going to go play hard. Well, you better play hard. You better be focused on what you're doing. You better know what you're doing. And and you got to keep chopping. You got to keep chopping. I think a lot of times teams are young and they start worrying about, hey, we're playing. You know, wow, it's. Look at the scoreboard. Wow, we're going to win this game. And when you do that, you kind of you, you go sideways. You deviate from what you're supposed to, which is stay process oriented. And the mental intensity has got to be cranked up. And that's been a huge point of emphasis for the defensive backs all week. You know, see a little, you know, you'll be able to see a lot. If you start letting your mind wander and see a lot, you won't see it very well. So discipline, discipline, discipline. Coach, the last three, you know, three games in the non-con, you mentioned there's a bit of a personnel disparity, so good on good was even more important than it typically is. Now that you've got a team that you match up well with talent-wise, have you seen a change in energy or juice at all in these practices? You know, I like to say yes, but we, we, we bring a lot of juice to practice. We do, and it starts with, you know, how we come to meetings in the morning. I and mean, if you come over there upstairs, you think there's there's something going on because it's um, there's intensity behind it, there's energy, um, it, there's a lot of passion for this game and for the development of our players within the walls of this building. And that carries over to the locker room, it carries over to the field. The leadership and the leadership council have done a great job taking a hold of this thing and making sure that practice is approached that way. Understanding that you have to be able to win out on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to have the best chance for success on Saturday. So that's been the approach and we've been relentless about it. Among your leadership group, has there been a different discussion uh, in terms of preparing guys for what the atmosphere might be like, what the level of competition might be like from a San Jose State to a Stanford? I don't. I think the outside elements are, you know, the noise and everything that goes with it. I, I think those things will always be outside elements. I mean, they only become factors if you let them or want them to become factors. In terms of a, a level of competition, we know. We know that this is one of the best football teams in the country, you know, a top 10 football team and, and probably more than that. Um, and doing what we have done since January is, in our opinion, what prepares you for this. This is not about a speech on Saturday or a, you know, a, a trick play on a Friday. That it's, it's not. It's not. That's not our approach. We're very, we're very process oriented. We have to stay on task. We have to keep chopping. We have to make sure that that we stay the course with what we're doing. Last year, Costello, I think, was the backup when they played you guys. Um, since he's taken the reins of that job, what does he kind of add to their off? Well, they're not one-dimensional. Not that they were last year. You know, they hit us on some big passes last year. You know, they, they got us deep a couple times, a couple crossing routes, hit a couple big runs. You know, they obviously they go those big splits and they get in there, they knock you off the ball. They scheme you up really well. I mean, it's not just gap schemes. They know gap man, yeah, ISO, yeah. Sometimes they'll line up, they'll run right to the sideline and run outside zone and let them kind of part almost like parting of the Red Sea, the way they run that and kind of pick off your edge guys and your support players. Um, but what you see this year is that, you know, they like against San Diego State, you know, the run hadn't generated what, what they usually do, and they started chucking the ball around. They had tremendous success, and they did it against USC as well. So um, they, they, make, they make themselves very hard to defend because of what they've done in the past game. Were, were you guys update? Uh, what? A update on Brendan's Yes, he's full go. You know, he did wear a red jersey today, uh, precautionary, so that, you know, when you wear a, a red jersey out here, um, your teammates know not to strike you. You know what I mean? So um, he he did extremely well. You know, I know he was shook up last game, but he by Sunday, Monday, I mean, he was good to go again, and he's practiced really well, so he's full go for the game. Were you guys able to diagnose why San Jose was able to get so much push against your guys' uh, rushing attack and getting that penetration? In well, there? what happened, they had four negative plays in the first half, and we thinned out our combinations too much is what happened. Um, we saw some looks that were a little bit different. Uh, we felt that we could full zone them and get some hats on hats. And what we did, we were too quick out of the A-gap. So you saw the penetration twice between the center and the guard, a third time between the guard and the tackle. Okay, where the, the backside guard was so quick and backside pressure was coming that the backside tackle had no chance to cut off the three technique. So those are three of them right there. The fourth one was just a really good play when we were outnumbered in the box. Um, and those were the issues that, you know, were addressed, you know, because we've been really good about blocking movement and knocking the line of scrimmage back. Uh, we didn't play it to the standard on Saturday, so we worked at it and expect a better result. Mara, 
talk about making Autzen sound like Autzen again. Uh -huh. In the past, coaches have had to sign a waivers because of the noise level, saying mm -hmm. you know they wouldn't sue. It's like an occupational safety hazard. Did you have to sign something like that? You know, are you, are, are you trying to get me fired up here? Or what is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, it's. I mean, what you just said right there. I hope. Uh, I hope that's like nationally broadcasted out there today and that everyone um, in our state and that's attending the game just hears how powerful that is and how important that is. It's a, we know it's an atmosphere like no other. Um, so have I signed a waiver? No, I don't, I don't think I qualify for that. <laughs> but um, we are looking forward to, to playing in front of our people because we think, we know how we think of them. We think they're the best. I know you said you got off okay. schedule a little bit against San Jose State. How important is finding some success on first down on Saturday? Well, it's always. It keeps you on schedule. You know, there's, like we always we always kid about it. You know, you have your play sheet. You've got like a really, really vast, you know, wide section here for when you're in second and five and anything less. When when that thing starts going a third and nine to 12 and sometimes more than that, eh, there's a little tiny section in the corner over here. It's not as cool, you know what I mean? So. Um, Efficiency on first down is all about executing, and it's all about, it'll be about what you do on third down. Third down is always tied into first down, so uh, it's, it's critically important. Uh, I think the way that you approach this game and the use of your personnel groupings are going to be really important as well, and making sure that uh, I think both sides know, you know we know each other fairly well, right? There's, we've had three games on tape. Um, their staff has been together for a long time. I don't think there's any secrets or pull punches here. I think, you know, both teams, uh, they, they know what to expect from the other ones and it's going to be a really physical matchup.